Welcome to Tony Burns View with news you can use. Tony has over 32 years of experience as a chartered financial planner and wealth manager. Tony's passion is to help you retire early and live the life of your dreams with no financial worries. Now to today's episode. How the scandalously elitist government pension system benefits the likes of Liz Truss. Good luck to Liz Truss for being elected as the latest Prime Minister. That's where my goodwill ends. You see, Liz, along with her predecessors or cronies, Boris Johnson and Theresa May, will benefit from a shamefully elitist government pension system designed to favour the ruling classes in this country at the expense of its mere tax-paying electorate. As the month of September is Pension Awareness Month, let me make you aware of this scandal. Members of Parliament MPs normally receive a pension of either one fortieth or one fiftieth of their final pensionable salary for each year of pensionable service depending on the contribution rate they chose. Members who make contributions of 13.75% of their salary gain an accrual rate of one fortieth. Their scheme is known as the Parliamentary Contributory Pension Fund or PCPF for short. But to all intents and purposes it, purposes, it is a shadow local government pension scheme. The trustees board is comprised of 10 trustees. Eight of these are member nominated trustees, plus one appointed by each of the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority and the Minister for Civil Service. So basically the scheme is run by MPs for MPs. To put things into context, what this means is that MPs only have to serve for 20 years to get the maximum guaranteed final salary pension scheme, whereas civil servants normally have to work 40 years to get the same benefit. By the way, the maximum pension is 50% of the final year's salary plus a tax-free cash lump sum, typically three times that pension. The basic annual salary of a Member of Parliament in the House of Commons is £84,144 as at April 2022. In addition, MPs are able to claim allowances to cover the costs of running an office and employing staff and maintaining a constituency residence or a residence in London. If you have served in great offices of state, such as Prime Minister, Chancellor of the Exchequer or Speaker of the House of Commons, you become entitled to top up from a separate source, the Consolidated Fund of 50% of your salary, regardless of the number of years service. What this means is that if you have less than 20 years service as both an MP and a holder of a great office of state, you will receive the maximum pension it would normally take an ordinary civil servant 40 years service to earn. The Prime Minister is entitled to a salary of £164,080. Pounds for being an MP, plus a further £79,936 for being Prime Minister. The Chancellor of the Exchequer earns £71,090, excluding £81,932 salary as a Member of Parliament, so £153,022 in total. The Speaker of the House of Commons is entitled to £156,676 annually, which includes the MP's salary of £79,468. Remarkably, judges are exempt from the lifetime allowance tax charge. This tax penalty applies once the value of your pension exceeds £1,073,100 on the occurrence of a benefit crystallisation event. Income tax is charged on the excess above this limit at a rate of 55% on the tax-free lump sum or an extra 25% income tax on the pension itself, which is already being taxed. They also benefit from paying very low contributions. Starting pay for a judge is currently about £90,000 a year. 
So there you have it. One rule for us, another rule for them. The ruling elite of this country lining their own pockets at the expense of everyone else is utterly shameful. Liz Truss has the opportunity to change the elitist government pension system to a more equitable one. If she were to do so, she would earn great credibility and trust. You know it makes sense. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to share it with your friends and family. For more information, head to www.wealthandtax.co.uk.